Hello people, in this video I want to show you how to repair the damaged roof latches from your Astra convertible so the roof can start to go up and down like it was intended to. The process to manually open the roof begins from the inside. This little plug is removed and an Allen key or the original factory tool is inserted into the hole and then you wind that in an anti-clockwise direction. It will need a number of rotations to be able to free the latches so that you can just manually and gently push the roof open. At this point, have a look at the description below because I'll show you the other steps to be able to manually open the roof. But the first thing we're trying to do is remove this plastic trim that sits over the latches. Now this is actually the reinstallation of this plastic trim, but by showing you here, you can see the screws that you actually need to remove. Now one arm is actually in between the two layers of the roof from the side and you can reach in and feel those screws. There's also a couple of screws at the front that you can access quite easily just by having the roof a little bit ajar. Once these screws are all removed, you can remove the plastic trim that sits over your roof latches. This is typically where the problem lies. These latches begin to break as the plastic gets brittle over the years. Once the trim's removed, you can undo the two little locking tabs that hold these side arms in place. It's just a matter of releasing the locking pin and then that comes out of that ball and socket joint. This needs to be done on both sides of the car. I've now fully retracted the roof and it's sitting in the boot compartment but the deck lid is just still held open. I'm currently kneeling on the back seats just to get this view of what we're looking at now. So here's the motor that controls the roof latches and it rotates around through a flexible piping or coupling here that actually turns the latches itself. Once that flexible coupling is popped out of its clip, you can just free it from both ends and there's just small splines in both ends. It is interchangeable end for end. Now with that sitting on here and me just winding it manually, you can see that there's a disconnect between the two pieces of plastic. They should be the one piece and still working together. You can see quite clearly here that they have cracked right through and are fully separated. Sometimes you'll just see these with just cracks in it and they're beginning to fail. This one has had a complete failure. Now the roof latch mechanism is secured with three Torx bits. Um, they were quite tight and on the other side I actually did strip the thread out on one of them. So just be very careful and make sure that you have the correct size bit as you won't really get a second go to do it if you mess it up on the first go. Just a matter of removing these three. Just make sure that you take note how it all sits together and how it looks once you're beginning to remove it. With the three torque screws out of the way, you can now turn your attention to the electrical side of things. There is a cable tie securing the plug in place. Simple plug just undoes. There's also a, secure, a screw securing the wiring just to make sure it was held in a safe position. With these removed, you're now ready to pull the locking mechanism out of the car. Just need to be careful that long arm that we undid before is just carefully pulled through the roofing fabric without causing any sort of damage or snagging up on anything. There is room for it to do it, but just be careful. Now with the latching mechanism on the bench, we can actually have a good look at what's going on here. Here is the new part. I purchased these off eBay. They're incredibly cheap compared to the price of a brand new latch. Also be very aware here that there's some electrical connectors and some little switches. Be very careful with these. We don't want to knock these and cause any more problems than what we've already got. Now the disassembly process will begin by removing this circlip that's just located inside here. So with your circlip pliers, you're going to need to remove this circlip. Now this is just ensuring that that threaded rod runs in a bearing and doesn't move at all. With this circlip out of the way, we can now push that threaded rod towards my left hand here and take it away from the rest of the mechanism. Mine just need a little bit of a tap just to free it up. With that end free now, it's quite easy to wind off that black plastic block that has broken away from the rest of the latching mechanism. 
What's important to note here is that there is a small magnet that's inside the plastic. This will need to be removed because there's some magnetic switches that help control the roof's operation. Flipping the unit over shows us another Torx bit that is securing the latching mechanism into place. With this one removed, it's one step closer to removing the failed part of this locking mechanism. Turning the unit back over, we can see now that this part is free to come out of the locking mechanism. It does need a little bit of fiddling around and what I often find is if you press the locking mechanism shut, it makes it quite easy to remove this. With this arm now removed, we need to remove the small metal collar that's just sitting over one of the plastic components and replace it onto our new arm. It is just a press fit, might need a bit of a tap to get it on there, but it will just slide on quite easily. It's important too to get that magnet out of that piece that we saw earlier. I've done this off screen, but I had to grind it away a little bit just till I could get a set of pliers onto that magnet. I couldn't just pull it out any other way. Now this will press fit into your new part. However, I chose to put a little bit of glue in there as well, just so that it had no chance of coming out. This probably wasn't necessary, but at this stage I didn't know how hard it would be to actually knock that little magnet into place. It was a little bit difficult and fiddly just to get everything lined up, but once it was in the right position, it was just a matter of squeezing that magnet down into the channel that was already provided there. Without this magnet in place, the little switches and the sensors that control the roof operation wouldn't work and you'd be running into more problems. Here I am just tapping that in into place. You can see here it's still not fit, sitting quite flush. I just need to push it right the way in. I think I did it off screen here and I was a little bit brutal, but look, a couple of quick taps with maybe a little hammer or something like that will just sit that magnet where it should be. It's now time to install the new part into the latching mechanism. So take the threaded rod and move it right out of the way. Now this has to slide in. Sometimes it's a little bit easier just to press the latch down while you slide this component in. Just like that and that'll fit in quite nicely and that metal collar that we installed before will slip through and sit into there. The piece that we removed will sit over the top. Now at this stage I just did it up firm but I certainly didn't do it up with the ratchet at all because whenever reassembling parts like this I like to sometimes wait right to the end to make sure that I've got things right before I go around and tighten everything up. Here I was just checking that it had a fairly free movement of operation and wasn't binding in any way. Now the threaded rod had some, some grease and some dirt and stuff on it so just gave it a quick wipe up, just check that bearing in the end. It was running quite smoothly. It'd be very unlikely that that bearing would be damaged in any way. Now it's a process of threading that rod back into that plastic. I found it easy to grab the flexible, uh, flexible coupling that's actually from the roof, just to wind that in. It just gives me a little bit, um, a little bit easier to grab hold of and rotate. It's a little bit fiddly here to be able to wind that in all the way, because you had to kind of hold the mechanism just so that you could easily wind it. Here it is just slowly winding in. And we can see that threaded rod is pulling along the plastic part which is moving that metal thing along. At this stage that circlip still hasn't been pushed back in so it's just a matter of tapping it right back into the housing where it needs to sit, getting the circlip pliers and just reinstalling that circlip. Make sure that it's fully located all the way back so that, that circlip groove is exposed and you can actually see where to put that circlip. Once you've got it all in, just check that that is locked in place and that that circlip's not going to pop out. Now it's time to do up that Torx bit that was on the back. Make sure that that's up nice and firm. And again, at this point, I would just check for a fairly free operation. They do take a bit of force to wind that threaded rod around, but it shouldn't be binding up in any way whatsoever. Now this is nearly getting close to job done. But an important step here is just a little bit of dry lube on the threads of that rod 
just don't want it binding up in any way. I certainly wouldn't be putting oils or greases on this. You don't want it attracting any dirt, but a little bit of dry lube will certainly help with the operation. Now returning back to the car, we need to thread that extension piece in again through the fabric of the roof. Can be done, just be careful not to let it grab or to bind onto anything then. Now the screws that came out of here appeared to have a little bit of thread locker on them. And I guess that makes sense because this does hold your roof shut. And the last thing you'd want is these latches to becoming loose. So a little bit of thread locker on each one and then I wound them all back in. Again, just sit all three of them in there just for a moment till everything's lined up and then tighten them all back up to specs. With the latching mechanism now bolted back in, it's time to install this flexible drive coupling. It does just slide in to the ends of the locking mechanism and of the motor and there's a small clip that just holds it in place. Now the ends didn't appear in any way to be different but I did notice that there was a small mark on the flexible coupling where it clipped in and I decided to keep it in the same direction as it previously was. Once both ends are clipped in there's a little bit of bowing of the flexible flexible line to get it to this point and then it clips tightly into that metal tab that's sitting up there just holding it in place. This is the same on the other side it's just a mirror image of what we've just done. Now it's just time for the electrical connector. Make sure this is plugged in securely. Now mine had a cable tie supporting it in place. So again, I'm just putting another cable tie here. The last thing I'd want is that this electrical connector somehow gets caught up into that flexible drive coupling and causes all sorts of issues. Make sure you trim up the cable. And again, there was that little screw there as well, holding it in place. Of critical importance, when you put the other latch in, it needs to be in the same equivalent position as the first latch. So if they're fully extended, have them both fully extended. If they're fully together, have them both fully together. I found that having them both fully extended was the easiest way to install them. Now, this is the actual working operation of the latch. You can see here that this threaded rod rotates it and latches that little clip down to hold the roof down. It also helps lift the roof before the hydraulic pressure starts doing the rest of it. It's now a matter just of reinstalling our trim. Remember there was a number of screws at the front and also the screws that were inside the roof. Now here's some operation of your roof in action. Hopefully there's no other problems with the roof. They're also prone to leaking at the pipes or blowing a hydraulic line. Um, these can be replaced and made up quite easily. So a lot of expense is not needed. These roofs can be repaired quite cheaply. Here are the screws that we need to replace just to secure that plastic trim in place. But before I've done that, I was just testing it out a few times, making sure that the operation was smooth and that I hadn't left anything undone. Well, that's just about it. Job done. Now, if you have any questions about where I purchased the parts from or any of the tools required to do this job, just put a comment in the comment section below. If you like the video, think about subscribing. Do give us the thumbs up and please check out some of my other videos. Thank you.